Get this going. One, two, three, four. Hey, welcome back to That Ain't Black Podcast. We got really, really special guests here. My man's been in motorcycles riding and motorcycle culture and a club and everything going for him for many, many, many years. He's a true veteran and a true blue got the oil running through his veins and everything and motors i mean he throttles in his hands all the time and we got john from black what the proper name of it the mighty black sabbath motorcycle club nation started in 1974 and still strong all right all right glad to have you on that ain't black podcast because um i was looking around for different black people that's what my podcast about black people doing different things in different avenues areas sports jobs businesses and i came across your instagram and i came across your website and i said i gotta get this guy on because um motorcycles are a part of america and when we sit back normally think of motorcycles you're thinking of some white guys harley davidson and um of course, the um, Hell's Angels, and they just get associated with them. You get associated with the bad stuff, the violence and the drinking and all that kind of stuff. And um, But it's really not like what you see on TV because of movies and everything. But I know that I'm interested because my buddy got a bike, and he's black. Then he kind of wrote me into the culture in the club, and there's a whole lot of black brothers out there doing it. So could you go ahead and tell me about the black people and how they are involved in the motorcycle culture and the clubs and everything in America? That's just not a white guy's thing? Uh, kind of funny to me because um, the uh, there I guess there's a lot of public uh, perception that... Uh, uh-oh. Sorry about nope. that. Uh, there's a lot of public perception that um, uh, <laughs> that there are no black folks in 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 motorcycle clubs, and and that's funny to me because it's still uh, a perception uh, that's held widely to this day. Um, but yeah, we are a subculture out there, uh, black motorcycle clubs that have exist uh, that have existed as long as uh, any of the white clubs. And we have clubs as big or uh, as famous or as infamous as uh, some of the clubs that you've mentioned. Um, and, and, and we're here. We, we live and thrive and exist in this subculture of brotherhood uh, encapsulated by an extended family impassioned uh, with the um, lifestyle of riding loving living life on the back of iron with the wind in our teeth man that's good how how many black clubs all along are there in america as far as black motorcycle clubs i know up in seattle washington we got the uh magic wheels brothers of the sons and we got but I, as far as going on the east coast and stuff because of course there's more black folks how many black motorcycle mc clubs are there in america do you well, you know? just you just named two outstanding very old mcs started probably around the 70s uh brothers of the sun and uh and uh uh magic the magic wheels and and uh, all of those that's interesting great clubs great brothers uh in those clubs and those clubs happen to be uh national organizations they're not just there where you are uh, they are in many other states across the country. Uh, so there, I would estimate, probably hundreds of thousands uh, of black clubs. And the reason I say that, in in the city of Atlanta alone, there is at any time between 300 and 600 motorcycle clubs in the city of Atlanta alone. So yes, damn, that's a lot. Just in Atlanta? Just, Just in alone? Atlanta, yeah. Uh, I think the first count we ever took was in 2009. There was 366 motorcycle clubs then. So, uh, especially wow. after we made the movie Biker Boys, it just ex- it exploded. Yeah. 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 How many okay, how many members are per club like well, 10, 15, 20? Well, or, the the want or what? The minimum amount that uh is allowed that would be recognized uh to be a recognized motorcycle club you have to have a minimum of five people to cover the five top offices. Okay. So they've got a minimum of five, and it could be thousands or 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 many thousands of people. Wow. Okay, so go ahead and tell me your background. How did you get into motorcycles yourself? Oh, uh, I, I, uh, my gosh, I was um, 
four maybe or five uh, when I uh, first became uh, impassioned with this uh, lifestyle. There was uh, I was living in Huntsville, Alabama, and <laughs> there was this uh, uh, white hippie biker. Uh, and, you know, Alabama in those days was a, uh, a racially charged uh, place. Mm-hmm. And so this uh, this white hippie, this just wild looking crazy biker, rolled past me, and I just stared him down as he rode. I just stared him as he as he went by, and he turned around and he rode up to me, and he was all mean and everything. And he says, "What are you looking at?" And uh, I pointed at the motorcycle, and he said, "You like this motorcycle, boy." And I said, I, you know, I didn't know I was supposed to be afraid of him. I shook my head, yeah. And he mm. says, you want to ride on this motorcycle? And I said, well, I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. And he says, uh, I, he told me his name. I, I don't re- I think it was like Big Mike or something. I can't remember the name he said. But he says, I'm not a stranger now. You know my name. You want to ride? And I said, well, yeah. And he snatched me up with one big burly arm and threw me on the tank where I was riding in front of him, and he took off, and my mom was out that front door (laughs) and yelling. I could hear her yelling my name as we rolled down the road. Uh And um, I guess I was gone 25 minutes. I mean, my mouth, I just had a cheese smile as we were riding so fast in and out of cars up and down the highway. So when he pulled me back, when he, when we pulled back, you know, um, the, we lived on a, uh, a military base, Redstone Arsenal, uh, and he, he pulled back up. So the military police were there, <laughs> and uh, my father was there, uh, and my mom was there, and he pulled back up, and I had the biggest grin, and my mother... Uh, so many racial epithets flew from her mouth as mm-hmm. she attacked this man. Uh-huh. She came in flailing, and uh, <laughs> the police grabbed him and everything. And uh, you know, it was no big deal. He hadn't kidnapped me, so I guess they 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 weren't going to keep him. And she she was screaming at him something, and he said something I'll never forget. He said, "It's all right, Mama. He's ours now," and uh-huh. rode off. And. Uh, uh-huh. It was motorcycles from that second on, man. Everything was motorcycle this, motorcycle that, and she, she. It was like every time I said motorcycle, she remembered this man, uh-huh. and she, and and she. The eruption was like, no, he's not yours. You won't have him. <laughs> but she wasn't able to stop it. So, um, I I got into motorcycles at a, at a young age. Um, oh my goodness, I was five or six or something like that uh, when I first got to ride one. Okay, when was the first time you got your actual first bike? What age? Well, I I grew up in a uh, 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 like a, a farm community, mm. so uh, I didn't have my own motorcycle or, or mini bike, but we had access to everything everybody owned on every farm or in every little uh, 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 neighborhood or whatever the case may be. Mm. So um, there there. When I would go visit relatives or whatever, uh, uh, and uh, or friends, and go to their farms or whatever, we just had motorcycles and many. Ba- we had three wheelers back then. They didn't have four wheelers. They got rid of uh, three wheelers because so many people were getting killed on them. You had to know how to counter balance yourself. But uh, I got my my own motorcycle. Uh, well, I think I was fourteen. When I got my my first one, you, in, in Oklahoma, where I'm from, you can uh, ride um, motorcycles. You can get a license at 14 years old. So wow. uh, I got my license at 14. You had to be in at 9.30 p.m. Of course, nobody followed that rule. But uh, I got my, mo- my first motorcycle, a Honda Yamaha. No, a Yamaha 125 Enduro. That's what it was. A Yamaha 125 Enduro. Now... I can remember the first motorcycle that I had like 24 uh 7 access to and that was like a Honda ATC 50. So, you know, when you're about 5 or 6 7 years old, that's what you ride. 
Okay, cool, cool. Now, when did you really, like, really get into the, like, the club scene and the culture of it? I mean, when did you go get get real bad in? I mean, <laughs> get the leather jacket and chaps or whatever. When I mean, when did you like get into the club atmosphere of it? So I I uh, I uh, I didn't. I never had any brothers. Um, uh-huh. I have two brothers. I didn't meet them until I was almost fifty years old. Mm-hmm. So I never had any brothers, and uh, uh, and I never had any men. Mostly women in my family, so I didn't have any men to grow up with. So uh, I joined the Navy, and I was about uh, maybe twenty something, early early twenties, and um, I I was stationed in San Diego, California, and I got in trouble. Uh, I was a submarine sailor. And when I was out to sea on a submarine, uh, as an E-5, uh, I was a, uh, a uh, chief of the watch, which is a, a watch station that really uh, E-5s uh, at that time didn't really stand that watch station. It was really reserved for uh, E-7s, E-8s, E-9s. And every now and then you would have an adventurous uh, E-6 that could do it. Uh, but an E-5, just, you know, uh, never. And... As an E-5, I qualified to be chief of the watch and qualified to be a uh, 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 diving officer. And these were some just really outrageously high qualifications. So on my little submarine, I was a big fish. I signed everybody's qual card, all this kind of stuff. I had all this kind of power. and But I was just an E-5 uh, with like E-9 power. So mm. when they transferred me to shore duty, I'm just an E5 again. Uh, nobody, nobody cared about what you did on your submarine. So uh, there was this uh, this chief, this senior chief. He was a E8, and he told me and my buddy uh, that he wanted us to clean the heads, the bathrooms. Mm. And I just, just this was just like the most uh, outrageous yeah. thing you could tell an E5. Uh, that was so full of himself, and I was. Uh, this is racist. I ain't doing it. I I told that. I told that that that, that senior chief man. I ain't cleaning the heads. Go get you some of these yeah. E ones around here to do that. So he was like, yeah, "You're gonna clean the head. I told you to clean the head." And mm-hmm. I said, "No, I ain't doing it." He goes, "Well, we'll send you back to sea." Well, I was a king at sea, mm-hmm. so I was like, "Yeah, well, send me back to sea." So. Uh, what they're supposed to do now is bust you, throw you in the stockade and uh, or the brig, we call it, and give you bread and water. I mean, they don't play that out there. Uh, you're not going to do what they said. But he did not want to ruin my career, and he sent me to a black senior chief. And that senior chief's name was uh, Mad- George Clark. We called him uh, Magic. And George Clark, uh, basically, uh, me and my best friend went in there, and he he, he beat us up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, back in the Navy, you know, in those days, you could knock a person out. And, and we we went in his office, and he was like, oh, you're not going to do uh, uh, what, the senior, what the senior chief said. And I must have made some quip about, oh, so they send a good black guy, and they, they okay. sent the, the black <laughs> man in here to get us right. And he just belted me one and mm-hmm. started punching me and my, my best friend. Uh, and after he got through socking us up and tearing up the office, then he made us clean the office up. And uh, he said, what you're going to do is, uh, you're right, he probably shouldn't have asked you to do that, but you can't tell a guy uh, you're not going to obey him. So he, he structured an agreement where we went over there, we stood in the bathroom for about 35 minutes and came out and said it was clean. He went in the bathroom and came out and said, good job. And we never were asked to clean the heads again, and we didn't get in trouble, and he maintained it. And, and he called that uh, a communication thing, and, and uh-huh. he, he saved my career, our careers. Uh-huh. So later on that afternoon, I'm walking by uh, uh, his office. Uh, we were, you know, we're, now we're off work, and we're going to go hunt girls. Mm-hmm. And uh, he walks out and gets on a motorcycle. And I was like, because I didn't like the guy. He had, you know, he had belted me a few times. And, you know, you're not going to hit him back. Uh, so I, I, I was mad at him anyway. I looked at him, and as I was walking by, and I looked him up and down, and I said, "What do you know about? What do you think you know about motorcycles?" Mm. And he, he, he guffawed. He laughed, and he said, "What the hell do you think you know about motorcycles, son?" And mm. I said, "I'm a rider." And uh, he scribbled down. You know, we didn't have cell phones back then. He scribbled down. An address, 4280 Market Street, San Diego, California. And he handed me that address. Mm. And he said, I tell you what, meet me at this address um, tomorrow 
uh, at noon, and that was Saturday. Mm. And when I rode over to that address, that was the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club started in 1974 in San Diego, California. And I saw all of these black men, Mm -hmm. powerful men, uh, proud men. Um, They were wild. They had naked women dancing on the tabletops and uh, uh, naked women dancing on the stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, they weren't afraid of nothing. They were uh, just tough, tough guys uh, in the middle of the hood and riding the prettiest motorcycles you ever saw, and the entire neighborhood adored them. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know, that just, I had never seen, you know, I'd come from Alabama and Oklahoma, and I'd seen, I I had never seen wild, uh, crazy, unafraid. These guys were, they were in the military, they had top secret security clearances, they had all kinds of money they you know they had everything the women loved them mm. i i i had to have a piece of that <laughs> yeah get you a little taste of that it tastes real good now when you say motorcycle club what's like the motorcycle culture and everything about because i know most of the perception that most people get is just in the movies how much of that is real how much of that is fake how much i mean what, what's really going on in motorcycle club so, you know, you have various kinds of motorcycle clubs uh, and uh, various reputations that motorcycle clubs have. So everything you've ever seen in a motorcycle movie uh, has probably happened. Uh, it's just glamorized a little bit. Uh, like, for instance, everybody talks about Sons of Anarchy. A lot of those yeah. things uh, probably have happened. But, I mean, no motorcycle club kills a DEA agent every weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so um, you know, uh, a lot of that stuff uh, is tales from other clubs or tales from from things that have happened, and they just compress it all into one club, so you have a show every weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the there's there's a fraternal brotherhood um, that that has a um, a component of it of um, a component of togetherness, a, a bond, a family. Uh, there are women that are involved, and 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 they belong either to the auxiliary units or to we uh, we we have a um, some some of the women belong to clubs. They're called property ofs or property of the club uh, or property of a, a member in the club. So we have properties or auxiliaries or social clubs or there's a, a just a whole uh, thing of women that that follow and and belong and 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 present a sisterhood. And are part of us, so it's a it's a family, and like any family, some parts of it are great, uh, some parts of it are not. Uh, there's some criminal elements in it. Uh, there's uh, religious motorcycle clubs that are out to save souls for for Christ. There's everything in it in a subculture, a community that uh, is kind of secretive. And uh, doesn't let people really get in from the outside to see in unless you have uh, found some way to get into the motorcycle club culture, have a motorcycle or or are close to someone with one. Okay, now what are the requirements? Because you see all the stuff in the movies and everything, you got prospects and... I know, like the Hell's Angel, you got to have like a thousand cc motorcycle. How, how do you get? You just can't, you know, go online and fill out an application and say I want to, you know, pay fifty dollars and get a card. How do you get into a motorcycle? Club? Well, there are actually some clubs that are like that, uh, and we look down on those with great disdain, uh, as we feel like they are watering down our industry. Uh, and some of the major clubs out there that you wouldn't think would do something like that are. So, like I say, there's good and bad in everything. But like in a club like mine, uh, the requirement is that you have a if if it you know my bike my club allows race bikes and cruisers and Harley. So uh, as we you know in the Black Sabbath when we were young, most of us had two or three motorcycles. So we would have a race motorcycle, like you saw in the movie Biker Boys. We'd have a race motorcycle, and then we'd have a cruiser motorcycle that we'd hang out on. Uh, and a lot of guys would have uh, only race bikes or only cruiser bikes or only Harleys. 
Uh, as we've gotten older, most of my club now has Harleys, but wow. we still got a few guys that come rolling in. So if you're on a race bike, um, it's got to be a 650 cc or or better. And if it's a uh, cruiser, it had to be a 750 cc or better. And I tell you, if you buy a bike that small, you won't be able to keep up with anything in our club. But that's the rules that were established in 1974, and we really haven't haven't really changed them. Uh, but, you know, other motorcycle clubs will have, like, you cannot join us unless you have an American-made motorcycle mm -hmm. uh, of a 1,000 cc's or better. So they're yeah. talking about Harleys, Indians, um, and, and, and other kinds of motorcycles like that. Uh, some will accept Nortons or something like that, but they're completely against crotch rockets or what they call rice burners at all whatsoever. So mm -hmm. various motorcycle clubs will have various... Um, kinds of uh requirements but you can think of a motorcycle club like uh you've mentioned like the hell's angels or something like that mm -hmm. uh or uh the black uh equivalent would be the outcast an all black uh what we call diamond or one percenter motorcycle club uh they are the black version and they have a requirement that you won't ride anything but a harley davidson motorcycle uh mm -hmm. so these are um how it is and not only will you uh, and and for them your motorcycle club your motorcycle will be black you can't ride anything but a black motorcycle so uh -huh. they can get really kind of uh um some some clubs you can only ride an adventure bike you know so uh -huh. um there's there are requirements and and each club sets that out and then you got to meet those requirements to uh join the club but on almost all motorcycle clubs you must have a motorcycle to join mm -hmm. Okay, now we sit back and get all the good stuff. Now you heard of the bad stuff that comes along with it, because I you sit back, oh, this is our territory, and you heard about the bad stuff, the fighting and the club rivalries. And can you tell me anything about that? Is that really true, or is that Hollywood or what? No, and it, it's very true in, in every culture. Um, like I say, there are great good and bad elements in every culture. And there are motorcycle clubs that uh, they're called dominant clubs. These are clubs that. Uh, claim and regulate and and marshal territories um, for various uh, reasons, various uh, enterprises uh, that they're doing, uh, and and they are the uh, sheriffs or bullies or or uh, whatever you might want to call them, the outlaws of uh, of certain territories, and they have the muscle and the might and the power to uh, exercise their will upon the motorcycle club communities, and that's what they do. So that does exist. Uh, you read about that. It does happen. It is out there. Absolutely. Okay, now when you say clubs, I mean, what kind of ranks are they? The captain, president, chairman, secretary? Like, well, how many, I mean, can you tell me a little bit more about the roles that have people have in the clubs? So typically uh, the top five positions in a club you'll see, uh, and it varies a little bit from club to club, but it'll be president, vice president, sergeant in arms. Those are your top three. Sergeant in arms is your enforcer. He enforces the laws and rules and regulations of the club and the bylaws. The vice president uh, helps uh, the president uh, 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 form the agenda of the club and uh, helps uh, the president make sure that the agenda that the members have voted upon gets instituted. And then you have the president, who's the spokesman of the club, and uh, the head of the club. And he uh, it's his job to make sure that the club gets what the club has voted on. Then uh, you, would, you might have a, uh, a secretary that takes care of the the meetings and minutes and notes and things like that. Uh, you might have a treasurer. Uh, you might have a road captain. The road captain is who marshals the MC when it's on the road. Uh, make sure that everybody's looking good and make sure all the bikes are together and everybody knows how to ride in the pack. Riding in the pack is a uh, uh, an acquired skill that must be taught to you, and it's one of the most important skills in a motorcycle club, a traditional motorcycle club. And uh, we ride in the pack two by two, so uh, we also call that suicide formation. So you have to be very, very good. Someone's got to teach you how to do that, and that's normally the road captain. But some clubs don't have road captains. Um, and then there's all other sorts of uh, elements that you can have, but those are really the, like the top five. But some clubs have public relations uh, managers or, or public relations officers. Other clubs have 
business managers uh, along with secretaries and treasurers. So that it can get kind of weighty, but we, we think of the top five uh, as being probably the president, vice president, sergeant at arms, secretary, and uh, maybe a road captain or a treasurer, something like that would be your basic top five. Then uh, that repeats like you might have that same thing on a regional level if you've got a big club. So you'd have the chapter level, the regional level, and then you might have a national level, uh, which would repeat with the same kinds of things. Wow. Okay. Now, why is it when it comes to black people? Because like I said before, when I first started, when it comes to motorcycle, you just think a bunch of white guys. Why is it that we're kind of like overshadow in the background, like a black motorcycle clubs? You know, we see some black folks all, all the time riding motorcycles, but when it comes to blacks and motorcycle clubs, they don't make that connection. You got any kind of feeling on why is that? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, why when we think about cowboys, do we only think about white cowboys? Yeah. Exactly. Like the first cowboys in America were black. Yeah, exactly. And and most people have no idea. I mean, but when you just think about it, like cowboy, mm-hmm. I mean, well, they they you know who were who was being called boys in, in America uh, when when cowboys came around. So a lot of people don't know there were fifteen thousand cowboys mm-hmm. uh, during the cowboy era, mm-hmm. and of that fifteen thousand cowboys. Uh, most of them had come from uh, remnants of the Civil War. Uh, so they were disaffected Civil War soldiers that had no plantations to go back to, no jobs. And uh, and they were poorly looked upon, especially right after Reconstruction. Mm-hmm. So uh, and and so what was left that what was left was you had a million cattle down in Texas because Texas came in on the side of the uh of the South, and they and they lost the war, and you had all these damn cattle running around, and all these people up north that needed to be fed. Mm-hmm. So you had millions of cattle down in 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 Texas, and you had three trails that you could run them up, and you had all these wild guys out there that needed needed to be cowboys, uh, needed that job. So fifteen thousand people, five thousand, one third were black, one third were Native American, and one third were white. But what do you see in a cowboy movie? Yeah, this is a white guy. White folks. I mean, the uh, w- way I saw it when I was a kid, yeah. when I saw it when I was a kid, you had black folks in slavery. And then during the cowboy days, we just disappeared and then re yeah. showed back up in the, in the 30s. But mm. in, in reality, and then all of the movies that they made, um, when you saw all those movies of cowboys fighting Indians on the plains. Mm-hmm. And they're riding around with this 10th Cavalry uh, flag, and mm-hmm. they got all these 10th Cavalry stories. Nobody knows that the 10th Cavalry was were the Buffalo Soldiers. Mm-hmm. That was a black cavalry, and every movie they ever made about it was white boys r- riding on the plains killing Indians. And mm-hmm. really, the 10th Cavalry, the 7th Cavalry, which was Custer's, well, we know what happened to them. Mm. But uh, <laughs> so so we don't get to see uh, that. And, and it's the same thing. Like uh, we made the movie Biker Boys and it is the first and only movie ever made about African-American bikers. Even in even in Sons of Anarchy, they had the uh, Grim Bastards and there was just such a small view of them. So when they made the spinoff show of mm. Sons of Anarchy. Uh, would they go with the black biker club? No, they went with the Hispanic biker club, uh, and there was no black biker club movie made, and mm-hmm. and and it was just it you know for me it's insulting. Um, yeah. So why why don't people know we're out there? Because we haven't been covered in the news, we haven't been covered in history, we haven't been covered in videos, we haven't been covered in movies, and we don't we don't force them to pay. Mm. Uh, if if no black folks watch Son of Anar- Sons of Anarchy and and the Mayans, if if black folks didn't watch that, then they would be um, then they would be punished for not including us in in um, in history. But we don't punish them. We go watch those movies, and if we didn't, they would make movies that would suit us. So we have to learn our our, our buying power as an African American people. And and not buy people that don't support us and what we do and don't tell our stories, or 
We have to do like we did in the movie Biker Boys and tell our own damn stories. Cool, cool. Now we're almost bypassing the whole thing. What about the bikes? Because, of course, we've seen, you know, Orange County choppers and stuff. And cause when you think of the bikes, I mean, the bikes can stand alone on themselves. You're probably going for hours and hours because, I mean, everything from frames, gas, tank, engine, rims. And you know how black folks is. We like we like that bling and stuff. Can you tell us anything about the bikes and how much they cost, how many CCs, all the accessories and everything? Well, I mean, it's a great thing um, that you would bring up uh, bikes, especially during uh, – uh, Black History Month uh, because those choppers and stuff, I mean, we saw Orange County choppers and all these folks, they get famous and everything, and Jesse James choppers and everything, but choppers came from black folks. We are the ones that engineered choppers. Okay, uh, in fact, in fact, the uh, movie, one of the most iconic movies of all biker kind, Easy Rider, both mm-hmm. of those motorcycles were designed by two black uh, designers, and uh, sure. motor, motorcycle uh, um, builders. Um, I have no idea about that. And they never uh, got any props on those designs until they were in their 70s. Uh, no but the most... Whatsoever? Yeah, uh, it's cold-blooded. Uh, well, I mean, it's 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 how it's how it works for us. That's cold, yeah. Uh, That's so movie, Ben too. Harding was one of the uh, designers, and I'm try- my mind is slipping. I'm really kind of mad at myself. I wasn't ready for this to uh, to talk about that, but Ben Harding was one of the the uh, guys who designed. Uh, so the Captain America bike that oh. that's been in so many movies and everybody's got one and all that was designed by a black man. We designed choppers uh, mm-hmm. out of our uh, garages and things like that. We've got very famous uh, bike builders, uh, Tommy Bolton in Oklahoma City. I mean, we we got uh, huge bike builders and designers, but we don't get the same. Um, uh, um, kind of a thing, uh, but yeah, our, our brothers do big things. We designed those choppers. Those those choppers and stuff came from the hood. As a matter wow. of fact, the Black Sabbath um, uh, um, uh, patch, my, our patch of our club, has a, a a man, a black man, riding a chopper across a, a cross. So, yeah, uh, our bikes. You know, we're gonna be about the bling. Our, our stuff mm-hmm. is gonna be righteous. Uh, we, we build fa- uh, a guy by the name of Big Cell, Fast Harleys Only, Atlanta, Georgia. He's got uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, he, he features uh, black bike builders all the time uh, mm-hmm. on his channel and, and all of the innovations and things we make in engineering and in, in racing and uh, um, design, customizations, paint, uh, sick paint, uh, radio systems, yeah. sick, sick, sick. So that's that's how we get down. We're gonna have a hundred thousand dollar motorcycle yeah. uh, sitting out in the garage, and probably two or three next to it. Yeah, yeah. Because I know my boy D, man, he got a Harley, and I thought that was fast. This fool gonna turn around there, make it even faster. Took out the damn engine, put in a new engine. And the engine was too damn much. It broke two transmissions because it was too damn fast. He got it all tricked out. It's not even the same damn bike, man, because I remember he had some chrome on it, and it was blinging it. He done went through the whole damn thing for the rim, tire, paint, every damn thing, and he got it going on. It's it's beautiful. I mean, man, and um, it's it's nice. It's nice. But what, you got, what y'all be doing in them clubs and stuff? Because I remember they got the two clubs that always pass by. Like, what y'all be up there doing, man? What's, what's going on? Y'all be watching UFC fights, boxing matches. They always got the grill going. What you? I know y'all got some ladies. What's going? What's going? What's what's the what's the four one? What y'all be up there doing, man? Well, the uh, the big thing is what happens in the motorcycle club stays in the motorcycle club. It's like going to okay. Vegas. Um, okay. We invite you to come by, and uh, we'll let you come in um, mm-hmm. and 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 hang out with us. Uh, it's a boys' club, man. Okay. It's 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 where men go. Uh, and 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 so the women that come in expect, you know, they. I always say uh, we're bikers, not choir boys. So uh-huh. you know, a little bit rough. Uh, uh, and it, and it's where a lot of folks can have these alter egos, like. Uh, Dr. Sherman, you're a member of the Such and Such Motorcycle Club? Wow. And you wouldn't even know Dr. Sherman was a doctor when you saw him in the club. Uh, his alter ego would just be f- blazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, inside the club is a fraternal organization that's secretive. 
So we have our our little traditional meetings and uh, you know our secret decoder ring sessions, and you got to know the password to get in the door. And uh, it 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 attracts men and uh, women and and people that attracts them uh, because of the traditions and the ceremony and the um, uh, requirements and uh, the the fact that you know it's cultish, it's cult like. Wow. Um, right. and, and it gives you a little special feeling that you're uh, above uh, the fray and you have something special that nobody knows about. It's it's really uh, cool. Plus, everybody uh, it, it loves what you love, which is to ride motorcycles. Wow. And, and so just like a, a glee club would be built around singers and, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, certain other kind of clubs, uh, Masonic clubs or whatever, are built around... Uh, folks that do certain things. Motorcycle clubs are built around uh, folks that love motorcycles and the protocol, we call it, MC protocol, which are the rules by which we live this life and it keeps dominant males from from destroying one another because everybody uh, follows these sacred rules. Okay, now wait a minute. What about the sisters, man? You got some sisters out there doing their thing because I was looking, like I said, I was looking around and they got some brothers and some sisters out there, some fine sisters too, man. I'm, I look at your page, but I'll be looking at their pages more, man. They got some fine, yeah, got and some women like damn. Yeah, like, so the women, <laughs> the women's motorcycle clubs are off the chain. Yeah, um, yeah. and sisters, especially black sisters, uh, now are really getting into it. Hey, they outspend. Uh, and outride the brothers in many cases. Like they, yeah, I've seen some sisters with some motorcycles. Uh, had a sister pull up on me one time. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, what, what you want? And she mm-hmm. was like, you know, let's race. I, I ain't racing no girl, man. You, you crazy. Uh-huh. And she said, why are you scared? I said, absolutely. If I beat you, I'm the guy who bullied the girl. And if I lose, I'm the guy who got beat by the girl. So uh-huh. hell no, I ain't doing either. But uh, uh-huh. <laughs> these women, uh, uh, and yes, hell yes, they're fine. Our sisters are fine, man, out here on yeah. these things. They... They, then they put on that lotion and stuff and, 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 uh, and um, you know, them high heels and stuff. You're not supposed to be riding in that stuff, but mm-hmm. they, they, they do. I mean, when I see them ride past and them heels and legs all they lotioned booty, up and like, booty whoop. all up in the air and things. Yes. And, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Cool. I mean, I mean, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And, and yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and we and we and we like that, and we don't mm-hmm. see enough of that. And keep that up, y'all. Exactly. But but uh, it's not just that though. Uh, uh-huh. We have some hardcore lady riders out there. Uh, the Black Sabbath, my motorcycle club, has the Sisters of the Cross, mm-hmm. and these these ladies have serious motorcycles, serious motorcycles mm-hmm. that they ride seriously across the uh-huh. country in all kinds of rain. Uh, so, you know, they're not just sexualized. Um, uh, yeah. They are uh, serious riders, hardcore riders. They got clubs. They they have rules. They have bylaws. They have um, um, all kinds of um, uh, traditions and ceremonies. And uh, they're just as serious about this thing and, and passionate about the lifestyle as everybody else. Okay, that's good. Now, what kind of events? Because I remember, like, my boy D, he went to, like, one, the Black Biker Convention. He had, I guess, one in the Carolinas. Then he had one at the um, down in Vegas, and he told me about it. He went down, and he said he had a good time, really good time, especially the one, I guess, in, like, a couple of years ago back in, in the Carolinas. He went down there, and it was really nice. Um, how how we, what, how many people come to the big events? I, I was at that one in, uh, in the Carolinas. Um I want to think that was maybe 2018 or something. Yeah. Um, so that is the the the. It's called the National Biker Roundup. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of people call it the Black Biker Roundup, but you know they didn't want to be stigmatized with that. They're the National Biker Roundup, and it's really kind of our answer to Sturgis. Sturgis uh-huh. brings about half a million people in uh, from uh-huh. all over the country, and it would be mostly Caucasian riders. Uh, but the uh, National Bikers Roundup started maybe ooh, maybe thirty years ago now, close to maybe close to forty years ago maybe. Uh, it started, I, I believe, I think it might have started here in Georgia. I, I believe the first one had like twenty people. 
So they uh, advertise that they get 50,000 uh, bikers there a year. I think sometimes it may be more than that, sometimes a little less. But there's at least 50,000 bikers that show up, mostly African-American, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, 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 cool white folks that hang out with African-Americans. Oh. And um, they they uh, it's gotten bigger and bigger over the years, and it's uh, the difference between that and... Uh, um, Sturgis, as Sturgis happens the same place every year, the National Biker Roundup moves. So uh, cities bid on it uh, in terms of uh, biker clubs bid on it to host it in their cities. Yeah. And so it would be in the Carolinas or Vegas or whatever. So that's one. And then, you know, you have big clubs that throw big parties. Like, um, for instance, on the West Coast, there, there might be... Um, the um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. There might be the brothers of the uh, brothers of the sun, or the soul brothers, or or maybe rare breed. That's another big club. They throw yeah. incredibly huge parties with rappers and all kinds of things like that. And then in the south, uh, we have uh, there's one that's coming up. Uh, big Cell from FHO ATL uh, GA Fast Harleys only is what FHO is for, and he's mm-hmm. throwing a big thing down in um, uh, Florida. Um, Oh my goodness! Uh, and I wish I had that piece of paper in front of me. But uh, go to F H O A T L G A on YouTube, and mm. and and Big Shell is throwing a huge party down in in Florida. Uh, mm. With uh, this is a grown folks party. He's throwing. Yeah. I mean, we, it'd be grown folks stuff happening down there. Yeah. So you ain't grown, keep your ass at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you. So uh, that that party is coming up, and then we have. Uh, yeah, we party hard uh, yeah, across the country. Do. We party hard that, 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 all yeah. summer long. Yeah, yeah. But the big ones are like the PRO, the public re. Uh, what is it called? The PROC. Uh, I think it's that's they changed the name. It's not public relations uh, officers meeting anymore. I think it's pub uh, professional PROC is what you need to know. PROC. Uh-huh. That's the proc. That happens every uh, uh, January. And then you have uh, the roundup that happens in August. The uh, the black bikers, uh, not the black, bikers, but the uh, national bikers roundup ha- happens in in like August of every year. And and then you have the Fourth of July function. You got just just all over the country. If you want to have a good time and uh-huh. party like it's nineteen ninety nine, yeah, uh, that these are the places to go. A biker party is the is the funnest party you could ever be at. Okay, now how far across the country have you ridden your club, or just you in general? Uh, coast to coast, more times than than you could probably count. We have uh, the cold ass run to the mother chapter that happens every February, where we get on our motorcycles here in Georgia and ride to the mother chapter in San Diego in the worst weather that uh, you know we ride in the middle of February. So it's either wow. always raining or snowing or sleeting. And uh, me and the bros ride across. Uh, normally, uh, it's uh, we take 10 days to uh, uh, travel, uh, have fun. We're riding like 12, 13 hours a day, sometimes 16 hours a day. Sometimes we're putting 1,000 miles down a day, depending on, on how hard the bros are riding, how be- bad the weather is. Uh, mm-hmm. In 2020, we rode in 10 days of rain. It, it rained. Oh. 10 days, all day, all night, all day, all night, and uh, my 50-some-year-old body was saying, why, man, why? But uh, we live out, we lay out, on the, in, 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 uh, lay out in the desert underneath the stars and bay at the moon and uh, watch the coyotes howl and, and uh, you know, do the biker mm-hmm. thing, bro. That's good. That's good. Now, what if somebody who doesn't know nothing about bikes, they want to get into motorcycles, doing what you're doing, how do they get started? What do they do? I mean, what's the ABCs, the one, two, three, to get into the motorcycle culture and lifestyle? What should they do? So the motorcycle culture and lifestyle is a little bit different than the biker club culture and lifestyle. See, all uh, motorcyclists are not biker club folks. Mm. All biker club folks are motorcyclists, but not all motorcyclists are biker club folks. So if you want to get into motorcycles, I say call a motorcycle safety course and take the course. They have motorcycles for you to ride, and they will teach you how to ride. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to know about how to get into the motorcycle culture, I'm glad you asked me that, then mm-hmm. you should buy my book, Prospects Bible. Okay. Uh, this is a number one bestseller, has been a number one bestseller since 2014, read by thousands of motorcycle clubs all over the world. Uh-huh. And the Prospects Bible, available on Amazon and Kindle, and at my website if you want an autographed copy, blackdragonsgear.com. Uh-huh. Uh, soon to be in uh, published in uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, and uh, German. Mm. And uh, it's going to be an audio book here in about two months. So the Prospects Bible will tell you how to get into biker club culture. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, black clubs, white clubs, uh, Hispanic clubs. really doesn't matter. Uh, mm-hmm. This book has been read all over the world, and it, it will teach you about how to get in. But the short version is you got to find a motorcycle club and start hanging around. You'll become a hangaround and es- express your interest to, to join, and they will teach you everything you need to know. Okay, man, that's really interesting because... I didn't even know because I know Delaney and my boy. He um he's into it around Seattle. And I know his every weekend he's gone. He just gone ever since he got that thing. He just gone and stuff. I see him like every now and then on Christmas, Thanksgiving, step on through, grab a plate, and he's gone. And it's really interesting. And then, like I said, he just tricked out his bike. He got thousands of dollars into it, and he really loves it. And he talks about how he went on down to Portland and California does all these rides and everything. And I would really, really like to see more black people represented in the black motorcycle culture, not just the white guys. We've got to get rid of that perception because a lot of, a lot of, well, well, they are represented. I mean, don't mm-hmm. think that they're not, you guys don't know about us because uh-huh. you don't see us, but we've got a thriving community. Uh-huh. It is, it is huge. It's, it's it's millions of people big, wow. and and um, uh, we we don't have a problem that nobody knows who we are. We we kind of like it that way. Um, okay, keep it on the low. Yeah, we're we're a secret organization. Um, not everybody can join. We ain't for everybody. Our rules aren't wow. for everybody. Um, you know, not not a lot of women will wear the the word property on their back. I mean, wow. we 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 leave a little bit to be desired. Uh, uh, with folks, not we're not everybody's cup of tea, and we don't want to be. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, the last question I'm going to ask is on. I'm trying to get you in trouble. How fast have you been on a motorcycle? <laughs> uh, I want to get you in trouble with the law enforcement. It's no, no, I, I have me. been, I, uh, I have been, um, I have been pretty close to about 200 miles an hour oh wow oh, I, man, I, I would damn. say yeah that's like nascar fast i mean like damn and um that's on a normal city street <laughs> on, a, oh, on a on a on a really on a highway bad. one time i was rolling so f- I, 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 there's been many times i think i've been over 200 i, I just was afraid uh-huh. to, to look at the speedometer there was yeah. so much going on. You time. You got other things to do. Um, but, you know, even in, you know, even when I had smaller bikes that would do like uh, 120, I mean, we, you know, uh, you don't even feel like you're cruising right unless you're doing like like 90. Uh, uh-huh. You don't even feel right. Motorcycles, uh-huh. you got to feel right. So, uh-huh. yeah, back in my race bike days when I, when I was on a Hayabusa and doing that thing, baby, yeah, we... We rolled, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, like like, uh, oh, like Country Wayne could say, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I know, um, I've been in the freeway a couple of times, and like a big old pack of them just come out, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, damn, this is too damn much. Yo, come on here, see yeah. those cats. When you can count to two, one thousand one, one thousand two. Yeah. If that guy is over the horizon mm. before you can get to two. He's mm-hmm. moving at 180 plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't it. even seem like they're moving that fast. Yeah, yeah. It was a new technology because I remember with the COVID, I couldn't, you couldn't go to the show this year, everything, because I remember the year before, the technology, especially with the cross rockets and everything like that, they get better and better and the bikes get faster and faster. 
And it's incredible because I remember my buddy was trying to get me, hey, man, get into it. I said, let me go hit 1,000 cc's. And, oh, man, you get a 600. Trust me, man. Uh, you want to get a cross rocket? This thing's like down there like a race bike and everything. You want to start off about 600. Don't get no 1,000 cc. I'm like, come on, man. Let me let me, let me get on the big boy. So, no, you can't handle that. No, much. no, you can't. Fight no, way too much you can chew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, yes, Lord. Uh, a 600 uh, is way too much. A 600. Uh-huh. We'll do uh, 180 miles an hour. Yeah, easy. <laughs> so, easy. so you, they're, they're not like they used to be. Um, um, the, so yeah, you have to you have to get what you can chew. And I have buried so many people, uh, uh, put them in the grave, that got a motorcycle that they couldn't handle, uh, uh-huh. and and died as a result. So it's very sad, yeah. and it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That's that's the that's the only down for of them. Because I remember my um, uncle, I'm crazy uncle Julian. He was a bad boy and stuff. And this was way, way back in the what the fifties, sixties, or whatever. And I guess um my grandma told him either you gonna you gonna you gonna die out most, I gonna kill your ass. And basically <laughs> he went out did did some dumb ass stuff. And grandma she put her foot down. She she gonna kill his ass. <laughs> she was gonna kill his ass. That's what back in the day they didn't we didn't have no laws and stuff like that. Like grandma can legally kill your ass and get away with it because he was just too too damn much, and he got a lot of trouble. In fact, he got arrested. And they was going to throw him in jail. So they said, well, you either you go to the military, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> so he chose to go to the military instead of go to jail. <laughs> or have my grandma kill him. <laughs> so, oh, man. <laughs> Absolutely. It was, bad. it was bad. But thanks a lot, man. You've been a really, really great guest. Now, before we leave, man, you guys got anything coming up? Anything yeah. else you want to say? Well, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that uh, you guys know about my podcast, The Dragon's Lair, L-A-I-R, The Dragon's Lair Motorcycle. Chaos. The Dragon Slayer Motorcycle Chaos is our podcast where we talk about uh, biker clubs and biker life and biker lifestyle, MC Protocol. My YouTube channel is Black Dragon Biker TV, which uh-huh. is YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So uh, we we have a huge platform. We're one of the number one MC Protocol platforms in the world, and uh, we talk about motorcycle club culture, the black uh Black uh, Black Dragon Biker TV. Uh, if you guys want to do something and hang out with the Motorcycle Club, we will be going to Selma, Alabama, uh, on the uh, 26th of February, uh, at, across the uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge. We'll be going there to um, do our thing, and um, um, you guys can come hang out there with us. Uh, go to uh, Black Dragon. Biker TV, and uh, you'll see all the information you need. We'll be going there. We've got two hotels. Uh, we'll be uh, they'll they'll be shutting down the bridge, so we are going to do some ceremony on the bridge, uh, and then we'll be partying. Uh, but we'll be uh, you know uh, uh, for Black History Month, we'll be thinking about those people that made those ultimate sacrifices uh, and um, uh, doing the things that they did to. Um, uh, make sure that we had some freedom. Uh, Representative John Lewis uh, got his skull split and almost died on that bridge, and they turned dogs and, and things like that loose on women and children. And now you and I can just go right over there and have a great time, but there was a time when we couldn't. Yeah, yeah. And people, so we'll be going there. to forget about that, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, because I know summertime's coming up, so I definitely... You know, you guys are gonna have a lot of great events coming up, and um, a lot of be doing a lot of stuff, and just like I know, you guys are you guys are real riders, not just seasonal riders. You just come out when there's nice days and all that stuff. <laughs> not allowed in the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. You're gonna ride them twos, baby. Yeah, I found that out through my boy. He's like, "Damn, man, y'all coming out this kind of way? Y'all crazy, man! Like it's <laughs> cold as hell. You know, I'm African, man. Come on, man. I ain't built for that. Uh huh. Uh huh." But man, thanks a lot for um, returning my uh, email and getting back with me. It's been a really, really great show. Definitely go ahead. Um, we'll go ahead and check out your book. It's on Amazon, right? Oh yes, I, I've written five books. They're on Amazon. Uh, uh, Black Dragon. Uh, but my number one bestseller, if you want to learn about motorcycle club culture, is um, Prospects Bible on Amazon and Kindle. Um, and you can get it at BlackDragonsGear.com if you want a. Uh, 
autographed copy. It'll teach you all about the lifestyle. Uh, I'm the number one rider in the uh, world right now on Motorcycle Club Protocol and uh, Lifestyles and Value. My latest book is The President's Bible, How to Be the President of a Motorcycle Club. So it's really cool. Sweet, sweet, man. Thanks a lot, man. But um, Go ahead and wrap this on up, and thanks a lot for being on That Ain't Black Podcast. And I'll go ahead and talk with you later on during the summertime. I know you guys got some events coming up. I'll go ahead and shoot this out to my boy, D, and I know he's going to like it. And thanks a lot again for being on That Ain't Black Podcast. Black thanks for Saturday. having me. Take care. Okay. Cool, man. That's good, man. Cool. Yeah, that was... Uh-oh, what happened? Did I lose you? Well, that was uh, my live interview on That A Black podcast, so I thought maybe you guys would want to hear that. Uh, it was really kind of fun to um, talk about our lifestyle a little bit and where we come from and what we do. Um, so that was really cool. And if you know anybody else that wants to interview us on a podcast, we're glad to do it. And I hope you guys had fun like I did. So please tune in with us, uh, Black Dragon Biker TV on uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. And uh, this here, our podcast, The Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos. We are not fake news. You are fake news. Black Dragon Biker News Network. Biker News you can trust. Biker News you can trust. Biker News you can trust. Biker News you can trust.